Well, good morning, guys. <laughs> it's I, Grandpa Peter Coyote, coming to you from the cab of my wonderful truck here. Not in Crestone, Colorado, mind you. But in a new place called Derry, New Mexico. D-E-R-R-Y. Out in the middle of nowhere here along the Rio Grande River. Little belt of greenness in the middle of the desert. And it's here we grow pecans and watermelons. And today we're loading chilies, red and green chilies, taken back up to Denver, uh, so everybody can have their green chili sauce, and red chili sauce, and chili con carne, and roasted chilies, and gee whiz, we the list just goes on and on, man. It's nice to be able to provide food and sustenance for the masses, at least for a few of them anyway, man. That's part of why I love driving truck. Because you feel like you're doing something, a good service, even if you are in slavery mostly to the corporate world. <laughs> it's a good kind of slavery if you got to be a slave, you know what I mean? I've been doing this job for like 50 years now, off and on. Since I was a kid of about 15 years old, and started hauling coal over the mountains in Utah where I grew up uh, in a ratty old truck that nearly killed me many a time but always brought me back. You know, Death and I have danced many a dance in this life and offered one often wondered why that is, why I should be one that has so many close calls, you know, and it's not just near misses in the driving world or I mean I've had illnesses over time that have nearly taken me uh, drowning accidents falling out of the back of a truck of course <laughs> things like that but it was a mystery to me for a long time why my life was so on the edge. Why it is that death was so attracted to me. And you know, in, in recent times, I've been doing a lot of internal search, and of course, that's where the answers lies inside ourselves. And uh, I've become aware of this pain that I've carried with me since I was a little child. Well, of course, I've always been aware of it, but now I'm aware of deeper aspects of it because I've healed a lot of the outer parts of it now I'm getting down to the nitty-gritty the part that's right inside of your heart and I'm finding that wow it's this pain this deep deep pain that most of us are unconscious to that I am blessed to be able to be conscious of it's this pain that brings us the near misses, the experiences with death. And I don't know, you might not be ready for this, but it's this pain that causes attraction between men and women. That drives you to go to places you wouldn't normally go. I mean, now, Grandpa's going through kind of a painful divorce. Oh, hell, it could be a lot worse, but... For me, it's kind of a painful divorce. You know, I'm used to I'm just going away. This one won't. <laughs> but even that, you know, I'm starting to look at my associations and relationships with people over the history of my life. And I can see now I've, I've carried a massive amount of pain, probably more than normal, probably a lot more than normal because of my unique position here in this earth, yet I'm no different than anybody else, even though I'm a carrier, a, a bearer of the burden. I'm also a bringer of the blessing. That's the other side of it. So this is why I can talk about this pain so openly and freely, because I know where it leads. But I've been looking back, and I've been seeing, you know how you people may not be able to relate. I know some of you can. But throughout my life, there's been individual associations with people on a business level, on a personal level, friendship level, and so on. 
uh, relationship levels, all of it. And it'll go so far and lead to some very pleasant and beautiful places. Then suddenly it's gone. The other person turns on me and, you know, uh, I'm just standing there with my dick in the hand wondering what hit me. You know what I mean? It happens a lot. About every three, four, five, six, seven years, major changes in my life because of this. And now, as I'm doing this internal exploration, I can see that it's the pain that I carry. It's the very thing that drives me to drive in truck all of the time. You know, I'll, I'll go on drive truck, I'll save up a little bit of money, I'll get a little business going on the side, and pretty soon I'm doing that instead of this. But it'll only go so far, and then it goes belly up for one reason or another, and I'm back to drive in truck. You see, I have massive amounts of love inside of me too, especially since in my 40s when I went through some very transformative experiences, but I've always had it. I'm just more conscious of it now, that's all. And I love to spread it around. It's part of the reason I do these videos. Spread the love, share the wealth, the peace, the understanding. So that's what I'm trying to help us through here, is help us to understand how you can be peaceful and still in so much pain. What it is that causes us to do so many crazy things in our lives. Anger. Heck, I've always had a bit of a temper on me, you know. And it's because I'm really sensitive. And I'm really sensitive because of the pain that I carry. My anger is based in that pain. And then if someone does a harm to me in one way or another, the rage will come up in a protective sort of way and make me push him away, deal with the problem in a raging way, which isn't always the best. Sometimes it works. <laughs> Sometimes it don't. But it's all based in that pain. That's why there's been such dissatisfaction in my life, such frustration in many areas why there's been so many changes major changes on a momentary way you know I can get out there and I can spread the love share the life that I am with many many people and then I'm back in the truck and all alone again well I got Angel the Wonder Dog with me today she's a pleasure to have I'd, I'd be lost without my little Wonder Dog I sure love having her here but it's because she can take it you know, the pain doesn't bother her. It just blows on by. She's an animal. <laughs> a sweet little animal with a heart of gold. And she holds no judgment. Others do. And this pain that I carry, despite the love and the peace and the understanding I carry right along with it, people can only take so much of this pain. There's only so much I can be around. And then I have to withdraw. And that's where I wind up driving trucks. So probably 30 out of the last 50 years I've been driving truck out here all alone on America's highways and byways. Of course, you're never alone. You're always with other people. They tend to want us to think of people in cars and trucks as non-persons, non-beings. They being those that seem to think they control the place. That's the general attitude. Man, I gotta tell you, there was a bad accident on Interstate 10 down near El Paso yesterday. Dude nearly killed driving truck, ran into the back end of another one. And I felt such great emotional pain because of that. But thank God the guy lived to tell about it. He may be boned up for the rest of his life, but he's still with us and still doing it. But the headline says, traffic snarl because of major truck accident. Huh? Didn't mention the driver till well down in the article and so on and so forth. The big news was the traffic was snarled up and people had to wait. Now what gives with that? Have we so lost our humanity that we really don't care about one another because we're driving and that makes us a non-person? You see how they do this? 
So when you're out there fighting your way through traffic, and you really shouldn't fight it, you flow with it. <laughs> we're learning, kids. We're learning. But you flow with it. You gain some understanding. Be sensitive to the people around you when you're driving, and you'll never have a major accident, let alone a minor one. When you start to look at people in cars as other human beings, as an extension of the very person that you are, another application of its self. Good grief. We can call them morons and mother truckers and all the rest of it. But we haven't lost our humanity. We know one another. Even out there in such an impersonal world as the driving world on the interstate highways of this United States of America. Treat each other with courtesy and respect, with dignity for heck's sakes. And you'll find people treat you a whole lot better too. Don't listen to the crap that we get from the media that makes it so impersonal. So it's just us versus everybody else. Don't listen to that stuff. Be kind to yourself first and foremost, of course. And then you'll be more willing to be kind to others, especially in traffic, because that's the big thing, big factor in the United States and many other parts of the Western world. It's where we're most dehumanized and isolated in our vehicles and made to think so little of each other we'd like to run you over because you made a mistake and cut us off at the pass or some other awful thing, ran a stop sign, you know, and pulled out in front of us, things like that, you know. You'll be far more forgiving when you realize that person's just you making mistakes too, you know. But getting back to my original point of the pain, this is what causes mistakes, accidents. Now you may not believe it, but what's inside of me in a big way is inside of you in a small way. It's our primary motivation in life. It comes from this pain. It's what causes protective feelings. It's what causes love emotions to rise. The whole gambit, the whole nine yards. So, you know, I would suggest first you become conscious of this pain. Yeah, it's in your chest area primarily, in the heart area. It's a restriction we've taken into ourselves. It's a feeling of great loss. It's exactly this that causes feelings of low self-worth. And then the compensation behaviors that we come up with to help ourselves feel better about it. Which doesn't nearly work in hardly any cases. You know, we are what we are. And as long as we think of ourselves as small and useless and worthless <laughs> in one way or another, that's what we're going to be. So getting a grip on this pain, understanding how it motivates you, what it is, where it is, is the beginning of the understanding of yourself, your true self, your true nature, the noble side that has taken this pain into itself and the human experience right along with it. With the idea of growing greatly because of it. It's the pain of separation. The pain you feel in death when others are removed from you by that death. It's a lie, babies. Nobody goes anywhere. We're all still together whether we appear as living or dead. But that's another story. The pain is the reality of the moment. This that we feel. This that causes sadness and breakdowns. Which makes you feel so unworthy and then... And alone. Because that's what it is. It's the pain of separation from source. And it's the biggest lie ever told. The biggest lie ever lived. And I shit you not. <laughs> that is what it is. And if you dig around inside yourself, you're going to see that. That's what it is. And I found this through personal exploration, and you can too. 
the question is then if we know what it is and we understand what it is why then are we unwilling to let go of it what is it that holds it in us well golly I don't know but I can tell you it's been my history and it's your history too and we're in it until we're finished with it until we feel completely reconnected with that source within ourselves that center now I know you feel the love arising in yourself right now you feel a warmth surrounding and within that pain see we are willing to let it go we just have to maximize the fullness of the benefit the blessing in it so we're going to stretch our experience in it right to the max we're going right to the edge with it back to the edge of death only this time in a planetary way and through that death reconnect with life in other words instead of dying making a separation from the visible world we're going to bring this world into the place where death is and ourselves right along with it because it happens first here inside of ourselves there is no danger there's nothing to fear I know it feels like death it looks like death it tastes like death but you're not dying you're not withering away you're maximizing the benefit of the blessing that's what we're all doing going right to the edge because this pain leads to life and we'll take it there and find our life and when I look at all of my experience all the millions of miles I've traveled all the millions of people I have sweetly connected with I can do nothing but bless this pain and you should too because that's the solution that's what brings us home to the heart home to the place where we are where we truthfully experience this life from now do you begin to see the nature of illusion because we're never truthfully separated from anything and therefore we're never really in pain it's an experience we've chosen for ourselves a way to go a presence of being that makes us feel worthwhile in our experience here and that carries us to such great depths of understanding and appreciation that we can be and do nothing but live in love for the rest of forever because of our life here and causes love to expand and grow it's a contraction you know a removal but from this contraction this removal comes expansion and reconnection grows on forever life can expand beyond comprehension now into experience because we've chosen this negative dark pain <laughs> to bring us to life again yes sir yes ma'am I'm telling you so do a little searching around inside yourself see what it is that you carry forward from inside of yourself begin to understand the cycles and seasons in your life and how they all rotate around this centered disconnection this feeling of pain separation that's why we're always trying to reconnect with people and animals and everything else because we feel so separate alone isolated and when we begin to understand that we already have our reconnection and isolation and aloneness goes out the window and love can be maximized 
Now, I'm not trying to say any of this experience here is bad. The stuff that we're motivated to. I'm saying it all has great benefit or we wouldn't do it. I don't care what form of life you're living and where in the jungles of the world you happen to be right now with it. It's of great benefit to you and others as well or you wouldn't be doing it. I feel the same way in the presence of I, which is you, which is what we see and what you do, what we do. We're married to this because it's also the pain of the Mother Earth and her feeling of separation and isolation from everything as well. Yet, look how connected she is with all of the planets, moons, and stars, and so forth. How everything works together so intricately in this visible universe. How it's in complete harmony with itself. And you begin again to understand the natures of lies and illusions. Because all of life is just like that. And the visible proof is everywhere. It's just allowing your heart to open your mind so that you can see and experience in this way. That's what planetary ascension is. When all of us understand the harmony and hear its voice inside of ourself, then is the pain gone forever and all of its effects and you'll never have trouble in your life again, not ever. And everything will work synchronicity, in synchronous fashion, in synchronicity. Everything will be in complete harmony because we're love. And that's all we are. That's everything. Take a look at this world around you, folks. See what it is that you love. See that it is that you're in love, even with this pain, this separation that you feel inside. And know that it's getting better now, because it's time. Our experience with it has come to fullness and completeness. Isn't that awesome? Here's to you, kids. <coughs> oh, good grief. Mm. Painful thing when you swallow it down the wrong way, I'll tell you. <laughs> God, I love you guys. I wish you nothing but the best. And send you love along with all the rest. May we find that peaceful satisfaction that we so deeply crave and desire. And let go of the illusionary ways of getting it. And understand it comes first and foremost within ourselves. That's why we're here. That's what we're learning. Whether we're doctors, lawyers, engine chiefs, truck drivers, garbage people, field hands, whatever we are. That's the nature and form of the blessing we've chosen for ourselves in this time. This is what we've chosen to be as we come to the transformative years, transformative times. And return again to our paradisical state of being. That is living in peaceful wonder and experiencing the magic of all life around us. I mean, even little pesky flies become something understandable and won't bother you as they have before when we find the settling of this peace. So from my centered heart, I send you this blessing of settling. And so does Miss Angel too. She wants to talk, don't you, Angel? Huh? Don't you? Come here and talk to folks, will you? She says, no, she just wants to get out of this miserable truck or for me to turn on the air conditioner because it's actually starting to get a little warm again, darn it. <laughs> Guys, just know we love you. Hey, I got a 
book I got to write, and it's going to be filled with trucking tales. But it's going to tell you the same thing I'm telling you here, just in a more roundabout way. That I got to finish it. It's kind of the sequel to The Atomic Bum, a book I've already written. If you haven't seen it, it's under the pen name of Coyote Bear, K O Y O T E, you know, Coyote with a K. B A R E last name. That's what I use for a pen name. I just think it's cute. Besides that, it's my real last name, Coyote Bear. And I am about as naked as you get, even though you see me wearing clothes. I stand out in public quite often in the raw, though I'm wearing clothes. Love y'all. Best of. Gosh, you got to see this country around you. It's awesome. I'm going to pan around here. First, you got to say hello to Angel. Angel, you there? Where are you, baby? Say hello. There's my Angel. Say howdy, Angel. <laughs> Ain't she a cool kid? We love her so much. And now, you got to see the rest of this beautiful and spectacular place we're hanging out in. I mean, goodness, golly, gracious mercy me. This is freaking amazing. Across the way, is pecan orchards. Can you see them? I mean, wow. And out that way, of course, is some trash and stuff. And just, but it's just a neat world. I mean, we live in the most blessed pet place that one could ever imagine for themselves. I mean, goodness gracious, this is a beautiful place to be in this earth, wherever you happen to be, even with piles of garbage sitting around on us here, man. I mean, goodness gracious. <laughs> Love you guys. Treat yourself with respect, no matter what's happening. And we'll see you again real soon. Grandpa Peter Coyote, signing off once again, because I love you. <laughs> you rock and roll babies.